You may have noticed that we cut Noel off in the middle of a piece of incidental dialogue and faded back up again on it without letting it really play out. You can rest assured that this makes absolutely no difference to anyone's experience of the game, including yours. If there's anything you're wondering now where were we? Believe, just ask, and I'll try to explain. Well, there is one thing. Of, what is it of all the things exactly? that you could have asked him and tried to get an explanation for, but we're gonna go with, what do you want, Noel? What is the deal with the meteor that literally appeared out of nowhere and ripped the fabric of space-time as it collided with this beach? What the fuck is the deal with your fucking shirt and the text on it? Why the fuck do you have a completely batshit ridiculous sword with a smaller sword inside it? Why do you have, like, string wrapped around one of your arms? Why do you have a moogle that transforms into a composite bow? And a sword. And a sword. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm just winging these, I could go on. Thinking very clearly then. I had a dream, but I didn't think it all out. I didn't know what it really meant. Final Fantasy thirteen two dot txt really. When your friends live in this Pretty bridge, much. I knew my dream could come true. Like a bunch of plot just happened to me, and I just had to go with it because there wasn't time to question any of it. Can be changed. That's what she told me, and I believe her. Although evidently he's had a lot of time to think about what it all meant. Well, that was deeply meaningful. Well, at least now we're done. We can uh, get get the hell out of Bodum and start the game proper. I can hardly wait. But first, we have to talk about mechanics. Yay! Immediately after we get, we go and uh, change our outfits. So we do have we do have cool outfits, right? Yes, definitely. And yet they're not reflected in the menu screen, because... Not in the menu, but everywhere else, yes. Anyway, um, so uh, the paradigm system is pretty much unchanged from 13, with one major exception. You'll notice the little tune thing. This was by far my favorite of their improvements that they made, by the way. So for every, for every single paradigm now, you can set it to normal cross or wide and what that will do is it will change how the ai interprets them so for example normally in aggression you have two commandos and they attack other units if you set them to cross instead they will always attack whatever enemy you are attacking and more more importantly they will even independently even if you aren't doing anything they will always both target the same enemy yeah, and wide obviously works the same way, but for it spreads it targets out. We're in a Crystarium. Yes, the Crystarium. Everyone's favorite thing. It's back, exactly as we left it. E sort of. The big thing is that there is only one Crystarium now. It is roughly in the shape of our weapon, and you go around and you choose which le which role you want to level up on any given node. Now, the big no now small nodes, they give you whatever stat bonuses are attached to them and, you know, whatever your particular get on that level. But you'll notice that on the big node, we got what you saw there was a Ravager bonus. The way it works is that on big nodes, you get a very small stat boost dependent on what role you leveled. And this is the corner, one of the cornerstones of how you can min-max and just break the game over your knee. Well, you say break the game over your knee as though that's a thing that you can't do by just randomly mashing whatever on this thing. This is true, but it's one of the quickest and easiest ways to do it. Well, it's definitely the optimal way of doing it. It will get your numbers the highest they can possibly be. Right, so the idea is that, let's say I want Sarah to be my primary spellcaster. A pretty good bet, really. I will always level Ravager on her big nodes so that she will always get bonus magic. 
and I'll do the same for Commando on Null, so that he gets always gets strength. Yeah, the for the most part, the bonuses are what you'd expect them to be. So the Commando bonus is strength up, Ravager bonus is magic up, and Sentinel bonus is HP up. We'll talk about the other jobs once we unlock them, but... Needless to say, min-maxing does get a little bit spurgier. But, yeah. Like, I, I, I kind of like what they did with the Crystarium. I mean, if... Not, not so much the stupid difficulty curve way, but... I like, I like that they just gave up on the pretense that it's a tree. Wish they were all that easy. I'm gonna tell you that I left that battle in so that, you know, we could see just how much stronger we were from just that little bit of Crystarium, but it was actually so you could see Null's stupid armor more. Also, we, like, we were murdering stuff in six seconds even before, anyway, I think, like, at, at this... In this area, the stats don't really make an appreciable difference. Against this guy, they might. These guys are assholes. Hey, sort of. It, again, it's, it's, they work this, it's, a lot of this stuff is taken straight from 13, so it's really just, did you, once you stagger that guy, he dies in like five seconds. Yeah. It's just generally a lot easier to kill them anyway. Alright, so, the other major change here is with accessories. Uh, by default, we do start with all four accessory slots. And each accessory now has its own cost. So as you saw there, the Iron Bangle costs 30, and Sarah has a capacity of 50. So you can't just jam four incredible accessories on everyone and turn them into gods like you could in 13. Yeah, it's just a different way of balancing it. Although I will say that this, that 13-2 system, is much more annoying because... Yeah. It takes a lot longer to actually get a high capacity. Yeah, also, like, there's a bun there's a bunch of, like, variants of accessories that are, they are literally called, like, durable and, like, lightweight or something. That's, like, they, they cost a lot more or less to actually put them, like, to actually equip them. But the bonus that it gives you is negligible and you might as well not bother and just use the regular stuff. Also, um, what the shit is going on? Well, it's our good friend Gamagog again. He's back. Also, what the shit is this music? <laughs> yeah, Gamagog has some very, uh, special music. But uh, otherwise, this fight is basically identical to how he was last time. Except this time he has that stupid shield that the Vitalas had, and we have to stagger him before you can actually hurt him. Well, how would that be different from any other Final Fantasy XIII related boss fight? I mean, this just does away with the pretense that there's any other way of doing it, really. I'm sorry, I just can't take this guy seriously with this fucking music. Are, are you hearing this shit? <laughs> I, I, I had forgotten how fucking dumb this sounded. Uh, and that's it for Gamagog for now, anyway. So he he literally just showed up. He literally just showed up completely out of nowhere, had a boss fight, and then vanished again. And he dropped a fragment, I guess. Whatever that is. What is that? Fragments are just collectibles. There are 160 of them. Some of them you get from doing side quests or killing bosses. Some of them you get just for... Some of them are just kind of lying around. And uh, ultimately, if you get all 160 of them, you unlock a secret ending, which is really fucking dumb. Oh, I thought the secret ending was hilarious, but maybe not for the reasons that most people might think that it's hilarious. Although I might be wrong on that. Oh well. Anyway, you could also, also probably notice chocobos. They are introduced very early in this game, but 
you can't just ride them freely. You have to have at least one Gishel Green. Are you sure you're ready? And we don't have any of those yet. Well, we actually just got two from that chest. So, the notion that we might not be able to ever return is an outright fiction, right? It is, in fact... This game tells a lot of very blatant lies, and that is one of the most blatant, yes. So... They they couldn't they couldn't have had this conversation before the are we actually ready to leave? Just kind of always irritates me when JRPGs do that. So this thing. Well, no, I, I was going to add something to the flat what that I just stated, but I think I'm just going to leave it at what. Also, we're still talking. There's no need. Well, we got the uh, we got Tweedledum and Tweedledee there in the back there. Lightning's knife. It's been sharpened and cleaned. What do you do? Hey, hey, shut up. Oh. Uh. It's almost like they were just randomly put out there for no reason. A kitten. <laughs> and the game was blatantly lying to us in the last video. Why Why did they just follow them all the way here? And why did they bring the cat? You too. Hey, Sarah. I figured no way you're leaving the pendant behind. So I made a chain, you know, so you wouldn't lose it. Why didn't it already have a chain? You know her. Did, but apparently, I don't know. I guess Maki was fixing it or something. I... Yeah, that that said, I can totally picture like Snow being the kind of guy who, when he wants to hand over a pendant to his girlfriend, would literally rip it off of his own neck, breaking the chain before handing it to her. I can I can totally picture Snow doing that. Like it's not just me, right? No, that's definitely something I could see. So maybe maybe we'll give the game this one. Even if there's absolutely no way that the writers were, like, self-aware enough to make that the explanation. The future won't change until you make the first step. You know what you're doing, right? No. Well, I can't say that I do. Oh, good. This is the first time I was gonna say, Noel, is this really the time to be telling, like, Godot that, no, I have absolutely no fucking idea what I'm doing? I promise you, I vow never to let her come to harm. Even though I have absolutely no idea what's going to happen or what kind of strange mechanics it's going to involve. But I'm just going to believe hard enough. Well, I mean, believing hard enough was how he got to Valhalla in the first place, so... See now, before we could have said that, hey, the, the cast of Final Fantasy XIII made a good case for believing hard enough, but, well, that got retconned, and now we can say, look how well that worked out for them. I'm kind of disappointed, I thought they were going to, like, dive through it. But instead they just... levitate, and then... They just, they kind of get sucked into the middle of it and then just shot out into the sky. You believed in a promise. You believed in a future you could not see. Why is... I will keep fighting here, at the end of the world. I know you will come. Wait, 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 hang on. Also, what? Sarah. Caius, what are you doing here? Oh, we didn't even get to hear him say anything. So, um... It's the Historia Crux. The crossroads of the time continuum. I'm pretty sure there's some kind of trademark on the word Historia being used to denote, like, a time travel line of stuff. Just me? I don't think so? I mean, it's not like it's the first time that, that it's ever been used that way. 
Oh well. I guess we've arrived at the main menu. We have! This is the Historia Crux. It is a glorified level select. Why not? I mean, it's an alright idea, I guess. So, as you can see in the upper right, there are a whole bunch of gates, and we'll eventually open most of them. But for now, we will see you next time in Brescia Ruins.